and I hope that you'll pray with me now and ask God that in this year will enlighten us as to what that is and empower us to do it. But bow with me for a moment. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, for all this happened and taken place. We thank you especially for your word that reminds us of just how wonderful you are. And so God, today I pray as I bring forth your message to your people, that you would so fill me with your Holy Spirit, that the words I speak would be my words, or would not be my words, but would be your words to your people. And let all the praise, the glory, and the honor be given to Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. As I said, we have an uh, awful lot ahead of us as a church. And I prayed about what to start on a new year talking about. And I decided that um, over the next few weeks, I'm going to kind of look at the idea of what to do with the new year and how we as a church can best approach this year and what God expects of us as a people who are really seeking to serve and to worship him. Uh, we have an awful lot to do, as I said, as a church. Our community, our nation, our world is in need of God's wisdom, his guidance, and his strength. That goes without saying. I believe all of us would agree with that. But what you might not realize, however, is this. The only way this is ever going to happen is through the church. Through Christians who sit each Sunday and listen to the word of God. Christians who are inspired by the Holy Spirit. Who have been empowered to go forth and to genuinely offer the world an answer to all its problems. The church is the means by which the message of God will be heard and the way in which his presence is going to be felt by other people. In other words, it's up to us. The, it has fallen upon us. If you believe in Jesus Christ today, you better believe his kingdom needs to grow. And we have been called as a church to see that that happens. We have 365, give or take a few now, opportunities to help this come about in our world and in our community. And although the task is a very, very large one and one that is filled with many challenges, yet in my heart of hearts, I know it's doable because we serve an awesome God. He is all powerful in all things. And with God working with us and through us, we can do what is necessary. We can really make a difference if we can only fully trust in the Lord to do it. Think for just a moment about the possibilities of what could happen. What if we all committed ourselves to make church, worship, and Jesus a priority in this next year? What if today, in your mind of mind, in your heart of hearts, you said, I am going to commit myself to be of service to God. God is going to be the priority for my life in this upcoming year. I'm going to serve. I'm going to attend. I'm going to be in church. I'm going to have my kids in church. We are going to participate. We are going to support. We are going to be involved. We are going to be committed. How are we ever going to convince an unbelieving world they need God when we can't sometimes convince ourselves? There has to be a level of commitment and dedication that we have to rise up to. And I'm talking about me too, not just you. You have every right to expect of your pastor things that a pastor should do. But what if we all committed ourselves to train our children in the ways of God? What if today we committed ourselves to ensure that the children God has blessed us with and given us responsibility for, what if we promised God today and committed ourselves to say, you know, this year my kids are going to know who Jesus is. I'm going to have them to the place they need to be. I'm going to have them involved in the programs they need to be. I'm going to have them uh, on the Wednesday night programs. I'm going to have them involved so that they can learn 
about Christ. It won't happen without you parents. They can't drive themselves here. But what if you committed your children to the Lord this year? What if you did that? What an encouragement that would be. But what if every one of us decided in the new year that we were going to bring just one person to Christ? What if we committed ourselves today to say, you know, I don't know who this is, or you may already know who it is, but I am going to commit myself to somebody's life that needs to know who Christ is. I remember one year, you see that banner on the back, <clears throat> the wall that, right above our television back there, it says, each one reach one. We had a year when that was our theme for a church. But what if this year we really did it? What if you as adults found that neighbor, that person, that had no clue who Christ was and was in such great, great need? What if you today committed to get that person here or to get that person before the Lord? What a tremendous thing that would be for the kingdom of God. What a wonderful thing that would be if we would just decide that we know people that need to know God and we want to be the person that gets them to the place where they can find out who he is. What if we decided to be committed to reading the Bible and, stud and praying this year and giving our hearts to the Lord through prayer and by understanding more about what the Bible has to teach us concerning who this God is that we profess to love so much. Learning how to pray and praying without ceasing would change this church. And I'm telling you, it would change the community. It would change this nation if God's people would commit to do this. There are a whole lot of what ifs that I could mention this morning that we ought to be doing. And in case you didn't hear me plainly say it, it's up to us. What if we depended on everybody else to do it? You know what? It wouldn't get done. It's up to us. We have got to see beyond our circumstance. We have got to see the need of God in this world and in our nation. And we have got to be the people willing to stand up and proclaim that word. And as I said this month, I want to address the issue of how to start a new year off right. And this morning, I want to simply talk about trust, trust in God, because a new year will never turn out right if we don't start it and begin it by trusting in God. In 2013, if it's going to be the year we hope it is, and our relationship with God is, all, is going to be all that we hope that it is, we had better learn how to trust Him. Completely trust in God for everything that we need. And this psalm is a psalm written by a king who could trust. And I chose it for today because of really the fifth verse of that scripture. That last verse really spoke to my heart about trust. Into thy hands I commit my spirit. Thou hast ransomed me, O Lord, God of truth. Now when I read this scripture, I was of course reminded of what? The crucifixion. When Jesus was about to breathe his last, he said what? Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit and he breathed his last. Of course, when David wrote those words, he was not on a cross, he was king. King of God's nation. 
There is something very powerful and very meaningful about those words. Father, into your hands, I'm going to commit my spirit. I'm committing all that I have, all that I am, and I'm placing it in your hands. There is something powerful and meaningful about those words. When we say those words, it reveals a lot about us in regards to whoever we are saying them to because some people say those words to something or someone other than God. See, the world commits themselves to different things, different people, different organizations, different thoughts about life. They place it all in the hands of others besides God, and that's the problem that we find ourselves with. The issue at hand has to do with one thing. How much do we trust God? What do we really believe about him? The level of trust that we have in God requires us to mean what we say when we say we love Jesus. The reason is when you do, and the reason we have such a hard time with that level of trust, that committing your spirit and trust, the reason we have such a hard time with it is because it makes us vulnerable. And we open ourselves up to so much that we don't want to open ourselves up to. You're taking a chance. You're taking down your guard and you're saying, I'm trusting you completely with all that I am. Listen carefully to what David is saying about the Lord and the level of trust he had for God. He said, God is my refuge. I am trusting you to deliver me. God is my strength. And in that he said, be thou to me a rock of strength, a stronghold to save me. He also said that God is my God. For, the name, for thou namesake, thou wilt lead me, lead me and guide me. And David does something else. He refers to God as the God of truth. And see, there's the key. Truth and trust go hand in hand. I'm not going to trust in anybody or anything that's not truth. Do you have problems trusting people that lie to you? Or that deceive you? Or that tell you one thing and do another thing? Are you gonna trust them with all that you have, all that you are? Are you gonna open yourself up and put everything into their hands? No. But David said, God, you're the God of truth. And he says, I'm trusting you for everything. I'm trusting you for all that I need, all that I want in my life. The level of trust we are required to say those words and mean them is huge. We got to really trust God, folks. We got to genuinely trust God. As I said, you become vulnerable when you truly trust. You're taking down your guard. But we have to do that with God because He's the God of truth. And when God says, I'll be with you, you won't be by yourself ever, then I believe it. I can trust a God who tells me that and then does it, that he walks with me. When he tells me he shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory, then I believe it because he is a God of trust and truth. He won't tell you something that he will not do. Trust is a very interesting word as is the word truth. And it's something in life we long to have and experience. Trust is something we don't turn loose of even with God very easily. Sometimes we don't want to trust God, even knowing all the things that God has promised and has never lied to us about. How many times have you decided, okay, boy, I've been batting this situation around. God, it's yours. And the next morning, wake up and say, God, I was just kidding, I want it back. <laughs> I'm not through worrying over it. 
I'm not through trying to figure it out. I'm not through trying to do, I trust you, but you better give it back to me because I need it right now. I mean, we've all done that. Every single one of us. And how's that turned out for you? Not too good, right? When we try to micromanage God, the results usually aren't that wonderful. Think of all that we have missed when we do that. Now my message is simply this, for 2013, be a, let it be a year of great blessing. If we want it to be that, it requires us to trust in God completely. Totally, withholding nothing. To give everything to Him to do with as He pleases, knowing and trusting in Him for everything. The truth is, we really don't have another choice because if we don't, then we're going to find ourselves in a place we'd rather not be. And it's going to be hard. To commit our spirit and heart and soul to anything or anyone other than God will only cause us heartache and pain and disappointment. There are many things we need to do to ensure this new year will be filled with success. But certainly trusting in God has to be one of the most fundamental and critical things we have got to do. We cannot not trust God. We just can't. But it's a decision that we have to make. And the question is, are we ready to truly trust in God and to commit your soul into his hands. That's everything. Can you do it? Are you willing to do it? I hope so. I hope that as we journey in this new year, our experience with God raises us to a place we never thought we could be because of his power and love and the fact that we decided on this day to trust God for something great. Not in the person sitting next to us, not in our place at work, nowhere but with God. Trusting him for absolutely everything. I'm gonna tell you right now, if we will do this, it's gonna be a wonderful year. It'll be great. It'll be exciting. And at the end of our year, when we all stand up, I say, does anybody have anything they'd like to share in the way of Thanksgiving? Everybody's going to stand. You'll be fighting to get up and talk about all the stuff God's done. Please trust in God for all things. You will not be disappointed. You'll be challenged. You'll be challenged. It won't be easy. There'll be things happen you don't understand. But God does. Trust in him for all things. Heavenly Father, thank you today for this time you've given us together. Lord, it's the way to start the new year in worship and in praise. And I ask that you would bless those that have gathered here today. Pour your spirit into their lives. Help them to see you for who you are. Help them to trust as we need to trust in all things that pertain to you. Direct us, guide us. Lord, it's my prayer you meet the needs of every single person sitting here today. That as we sing this final song, if someone has a concern, a worry, a problem, a situation, I pray, God, they would come to this altar of prayer and pray. Or if they just want to come and celebrate and dedicate themselves to trusting you, I pray that would happen as well. But God, let something happen in the midst of this worship. Let something take place that will transform us into a church that can truly make a difference. And we ask it all now in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen.